After the Ravens demolished the Texans in the playoffs, a lot of people are saying Mike McDonald's got to be the next Seahawks head coach. I just want to offer a little bit of perspective that some things to consider that maybe aren't being talked about online. I saw a tweet from Jim Nagy yesterday, and I think this is really important to point out. He says, during draft time, you always hear Raven scouts talking about finding guys who are Ravens. There's been so much stability that being a Raven means something. This is a roster filled with Ravens right now. Such a well-built and well-coached team, they'll be hard to beat. This is something that is really important to point out. You know, over the previous GM and now the current GM who were working together before, this is they have created what is a Raven over the course of 20 plus years. You know, this has been a long, long time figuring out who they are, the guys they want to bring in. And this is another perfect example of that. You know, they've won two Super Bowls with this mentality. They may well win a third in the coming weeks. It's really hard to transplant that, guys. If you run through and just go and Google it, I'm not going to run through all the names for you now, but if you just Google who has been an offensive coordinator, who has been a defensive coordinator for the Baltimore Ravens over the last 15 years, there are some guys who have gone on and been head coaches from that staff, and it hasn't really worked for them. The most successful one was Rex Ryan when he went to the Jets. Everybody else kind of bombed a little bit. You, There's no real evidence that you can translate translate what being a Raven is to another team by handpicking one of their coaches. They have something special and it's led by the top. A brilliant front office that has been a brilliant front office for a long, long time. Well, great clarity on what they are, what they want to do. And, and listen, if you think that just going and getting the Ravens defensive coordinator and making him the head coach in Seattle will give you what you saw on the field from the Ravens, it, it, it isn't going to happen. And people are saying, well, he's out schemed Shanahan, he's out schemed Slowick and all of these Shanahan type. I don't think it's that at all. I think if you actually are serious about what the Ravens are, it's, it's a loaded offense with the MVP at quarterback who apply an awful lot of scoreboard pressure and a defense that just flies to the ball, gang tackles well, tackles in open field very, very well, and they get after you. And it all meshes together. You know, that circle of toughness that Pete Carroll was always talking about is evident in Baltimore. But I do not think that if you just take Mike McDonald and put him as the head coach of the Seahawks, that you are going to get that within two or three years. I'm afraid that just don't think that's true because you have to take everything that is in essence of the Ravens and bring it to Seattle. And you aren't going to do that. You're not bringing the, you know, an assistant GM and seven coaches with you. It, it would just be Mike McDonald. So I think that's just something that people need to be aware of. It's very, very difficult to say, I want what's in Baltimore because teams have tried doing that and it, and it hasn't worked. It really hasn't worked. The other thing that I would point out here, because look, I think Mike McDonald's great and I don't know why they haven't requested an interview with him. I would personally interview him if I was the Seahawks. But as of recording this video, no request has got in for him. And people will say, well, why? Why is that the case? I'm gonna, I'll am gonna. i tell you why I think that's the case. When you actually look at what's going to happen this offseason, Jim Harbaugh is going to get the charge job. He's going to put together a whole staff. So Mike McDonald has only ever worked for the Harbaugh's. He's worked for Harbaugh in Michigan, and he's worked for Harbaugh in Baltimore. When Jim Harbaugh puts his staff together, he's going to appoint guys who realistically Mike McDonald might want to have on his staff. So the pool limits. And then if you take Mike McDonald away from Baltimore and move him to Seattle, there's going to be internal appointments as well. So even if Mike McDonald was able to bring a couple of coaches over, they might not be the better ones because John Horbaugh might say, well, we want you to, we're going to give you a promotion to stay on our staff. So we wouldn't bring a clump of players, uh, staff together because John Harbaugh would probably promote internally to keep some of his better guys. He is also incredibly well supported by Anthony Weaver, who is the assistant head coach slash defensive line coach. So when we are, and I've, I've been guilty of it as well, praising Mike McDonald for saying, look what a great job Jadavian Clown is doing. Look at what a, a great job uh, Justin Manabike is doing. You know, they, they've done an excellent job on the defensive line. It's hard to sort of really work out how much of that is Anthony Weaver, who is the assistant head coach and the defensive line coach, and how much of that is Mike McDonald. And if you take McDonald, is Weaver going to become the defensive coordinator? Is he going to be snatched away to go and work in Seattle? Or is he going to stay in Baltimore where he is, you know, it was a big thing for him to go back to Baltimore in the first place to join their coaching staff. And he's really settled there. You know, is that, is he going to ever leave the Ravens for a job other than to be a head coach himself? I'm not sure. So 
who is the staff that Mike McDonald's going to bring with him? And he, I, look, I imagine he doesn't have the greatest set of contacts because he has only worked for Jim and John. He hasn't been around. He hasn't sort of maybe got the contacts that some of these other guys have got. And look, we were having the same conversation with Bobby Slay. Maybe that's on to John Schneider to go and get the people and to use his contacts in order to bring people in and build a staff. Certainly plausible. But who's the offensive coordinator going to be? Because if you look at the people who are being interviewed right now to go and say, join the Bears, it's Cliff Kingsbury. And it's Shane Waldron's getting job. That, that's how much there's a dearth of talent at the offensive coordinator role. If you are not appointing someone like Ben Johnson or Bobby Slowick or one of these offensive-minded coaches, there are teams out there who are saying, actually, we want to interview Shane Waldron or Cliff Kingsbury. Like, who are you going to get? Who is going to call the plays for Mike McDonald? And then the other thing is he's not going to be able to bring Lamar Jackson with him. And do not underestimate how important it is that the Ravens have the NFL MVP who is playing fantastic football. It just it, he's making it look effortless. He looks superb. And he deserves to add a Super Bowl ring to the MVP crown that he's going to get. I, I just think these are things that we have to be mindful of here. You know, the idea of just copying the Ravens to me, doesn't seem very realistic. And then the other thing that I would say is, you know, yesterday shouldn't be a surprise. Anybody who watched the video that I did yesterday where I said, the Ravens are going to demolish the Texans, it shouldn't change anything, should have expected what was going to happen because you had the most loaded, talented, informed team at home, heavy favorite in the playoffs against an upstart young team with a bunch of rookies, a rookie quarterback on the road, overachieved just to be in the divisional round in the first place, the Texans, that had absolute hammering written all over it from the, the moment that the contest was arranged last week. So it shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. For me, it doesn't change anything with regards to Bobby Slowick. I think he's shown more than enough this season. This is not the same as Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn's Cowboys were expected to beat the Packers and they were awful from start to finish at home against an underdog team. I don't think anybody should have had any realistic expectation that Bobby Slowick was just going to genius his way to an unbelievable upset victory. It just, it was never realistic and you can't judge Slowick the same way that you can judge Quinn. So basically, I think a bit of perspective needed. I think Mike McDonald's a great coach. I think they should interview him. I think they should hear him out. At the moment, they haven't requested an interview. That may still come. There may be a reason for that. The other thing you've got to remember here is if, if it is going to be the Niners and the Ravens in the, in the Super Bowl, you are waiting a long time to hire your head coach and get things moving. In the meantime, other coaches are getting hired and they are going and appointing their guys. It's one of the reasons that you know the Eagles have suffered this season because they went to the Super Bowl. Jonathan Gannon left after the Super Bowl. All of the coaches, including Vic Fangio, who they wanted at defensive coordinator, had been hired at that point and they missed out. And then they were kind of scrambling around and they ended up with Sean Desai and that was a catastrophe for them. So you don't want to leave things too late. And if the Ravens are going to get to the Super Bowl, there's a decent chance of that, then it, it, you have to wait a long time to build your staff and bring your coach in. And when it's somebody like Mike McDonald who is not just got, I've got my ready-made guys, that can be a bit of an issue. And look, I'm not against the defensive head coach. You have Rabel's on my list of top three. Bit of a difference there because... He's available, you can appoint him whenever, and he's got ready-made staff, including an offensive coordinator who can come in very quickly, who he's worked with before and a top five offense with before, and he isn't going to get poached. And whatever you think about Arthur Smith, it would be a logical thing to do to have him run your offense, given his experience, given that he has had success with Rabel in the past. I think that would make some sense. However, you know, I'm sure over the next few days, we're going to get every radio hit and loads of articles saying, hey, Mike McDonald should be the guy because, you know, toughness and they, they, they're winning and scheming. But as I said, tough to translate the Ravens' way. Loaded team. Yesterday shouldn't be a surprise. Might have trouble building a staff. Might be the reason why, so far, the Seahawks have not requested an interview with Mike McDonald.